I really believe that insurance gets really, really good as long as you don't quit. What most people don't know, what most people don't know is that only 4%, only 4% of companies in the US do seven figures a year. But watch this, there are more seven-figure earners in our industry than any other industry in the world. Which means you're in the right vehicle. Which means as long as you don't quit, life is going to get really, really good. Who's been in the industry a while and you're like, dude, I can see that life gets really good if you don't quit. Good. Let that be a message to everybody here that's new. Because I'm telling you, as long as you don't quit, you will not fail. I had something amazing happen when I was 16 years old. I was supposed to go and work at little Apple Market, a little grocery store in Rogersville, Missouri, when I was 16. It's 3.30, I'm supposed to work at 4, 4 to 10 on a weekend shift, part-time, stocking shelves, you know, grabbing carts in the freezing cold, all that fun stuff, right? Making like six bucks an hour, amazing job, okay? I still showed up and committed and, and was one of the best employees I've ever seen, which is why they were like super sad that I had to leave. I'm glad I'm not there anymore, but you get the idea. I went to my dad because I was throwing up. I didn't feel well. And I said, hey, I'm throwing up. I don't feel well. I don't want to go to work today. And I was supposed to go to work in about 30 minutes from then. And he said something that changed my life forever. He said, you do whatever you want to do, but you know what I would do. I'm like, gosh, dang it, Dad, come on. <laughs> so I went to work. I showed up. I remember last year, early 2020, January, I was in South Carolina for an event. I was in Chattanooga for an event. I had to drive to Atlanta to get on a plane to fly to Orlando to go train a company and speak at their conference the next day. All in one day, by the way, my Atlanta flight gets delayed. I get in about 1.30 in the morning. I get to my room at about 2.30 in the morning. I've got to be at breakfast at 7.30. I've got to speak at 8 o'clock. But there's five things I do every single day to start my day. You're going to want to write these down. The moment I adopted these, the moment I started doing these, everything started to change in my life. Because what I did was, I didn't know what was happening, but these five things I'm gonna give you created discipline. They created habits. And they created a monster. First one is to wake up before 6 a.m. Number two, and, 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 and you know what? The first excuse everybody's gonna think, some, some of us, I'm not a morning person. Guess what? I used to tell myself the same thing. So you're in luck. Number two, write down my goals every morning. I got some of the biggest goals of anybody in our industry. My wife and I are going to buy a beach house this year. I'm going to buy an airplane this year. Our companies will do over $100 million total at some point in the future. We will get 10,000 agents to 8% Nation, our conference, in the future. And the last goal I write down every single day is I want to help every insurance agent in the world, which keeps me focused and humble on everything that I'm doing. Third thing I do every morning is I work out. I get my energy right. This past year, I did a half marathon and an Ironman. I gave myself one week to prep for the half marathon, 13.1 mile run, and I hadn't ran more than a mile in seven years. But I'm gonna run 13 in a week. Makes a ton of sense. Short term targets. You look great, man. Thanks, buddy, appreciate it, thank you. That's how I make myself get in shape. I register for something I'm not prepared for, on purpose. They said you can't run a half marathon in under two hours. Not your first one. That never happens. I said, well, 
Just wait and see. Killed myself, but I ran an hour and 57 minutes. Then I signed up for an Ironman the next day. 70.3 miles, 1.2 mile swim, 56 mile bike ride, 13.1 mile run. I gave myself, most people are like, you need eight to 12 months to prep for an Ironman. I gave myself 90 days running, 60 days biking, and 30 days swimming. And completed it too. What I've learned is, if I want something bad enough, I can have it. If I want something bad enough, I can take it. If I want something bad enough, I'll go get it. And energy is everything. The moment I don't work out, me getting up in front of a room is gonna be really bad. My energy's gonna be off. I'm not gonna be fired up. I'm out there doing jumping jacks, running around the room, doing push-ups and all that when everybody else is speaking in here, but nobody knew. Why? Because your energy matters. When you go into a cell, you are selling conviction. You are selling passion. And if my energy's off, I'm not going to be as convicted, am I? If my energy's off, I'm not going to be as passionate, am I? So I work out. Four. That almost sounded like the song, uh, I work out. The number four, <laughs> I focus on learning something every morning. Your brain is the most accepted to new information first thing in the morning. Books, audio books, YouTube videos, I am learning something every single day. I don't know it all and I never will. And number five, I finish every shower with a couple minutes of ice cold water. Cold shower. You say, that's, you said, dude, you had me at the first four, but I am not doing number five. Okay, I'm with you, I get it. Here's why. Number one, it wakes me up. Number two, it forces me to start my day doing something that I don't want to do. There's power in forcing yourself to do something that you do not want to do. Trust me on that. Because guess what? To be successful in 2021, you got to do a lot of stuff that you don't want to do. True or true? I train myself to start my day every single day by doing something I don't want to do. You need to get in a habit. When you say you're going to do something, you do it. When you know you need to do something, you do it. And you do it now, not tomorrow. And I'll start working out on Monday. You're talking, why can't we work out now? That's the reason 92% of insurance agents fail. What I've learned is, as long as you don't quit, it's impossible to fail. But you can give a lot of reasons for why insurance agents don't succeed. The number one reason why is they quit. Quitting's a choice. Quitting's a mindset. Quitting's an option. This is the most mentally tough career on the planet. It makes real estate look freaking easy. <laughs> True or false? True. Like I can, you know, like my, my, my family wants me to sell them a home. They don't always want me to sell them insurance. Like it, 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 it's, it, it, this is the toughest career on planet Earth, which is why more people fell in their first three years in our industry than any other industry on planet Earth. But again, you saw the hands earlier. Life gets really good as long as you don't quit. Who's committing right now that you're not only going to not quit in 2021, but that you're never going to quit? And don't raise your hand if you don't mean it, by the way. Don't do it, okay? Don't do it, because then not only you lied to you, but you lied to me too, okay? So from now on, nobody in the room is allowed to quit. Who's the easiest person in the world to lie to? Yourself. <laughs> Yourself. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll make the call then. Trust me. Never quit. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're gonna love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. How many people in the room are selling life insurance weekly? Simplified issue life insurance. How many people in the room are selling Medicare? Anybody selling mortgage protection? 
How many people are selling final expense? We specialize in the